Enemy density is a hot topic in Destiny. Some make it out to be a kind of gold standard for good content, but Warframe has far more enemies in often much tighter spaces than Destiny, and it can feel like a slog even at the best of times. More than that, traditional MMOs like Final Fantasy XIV can feel thrilling even when only one enemy is on the field. Well, that's because MMOs have mechanics, you say. Sure, but that's kind of my point. It's clearly not just enemy density that's important. What makes combat in a game interesting is how much a player has to manage. A game like Devil May Cry, for example, may see you fighting one or two enemies at a time. It's engaging because you have resources to manage, you need to tailor your fighting to the enemy types, and you're trying to be the most stylish that you can. In MMOs, there's rotations and party health to keep in mind while the bosses throw out massive attacks that demand you position yourself with high precision. Warframe is more like Dynasty Warriors in that most modes just throw bodies at you and those enemies tie into the objectives sometimes. Destiny sports a more curated experience. Every encounter is created and tailored down to the number and kinds of enemies that spawn and where. But it also has boss mechanics, resources, and team dynamics that players need to manage. The combination of these things, resources, teams, enemies, threats, all are part of the information density of gameplay. Now, it is definitely possible to have too much info thrown at you at once, but without enough of it, games can just turn into a meat grinder where the number of enemies you face doesn't make a difference. So let's talk about why you don't want enemy density, you want information density. If you Google information density, you may come across this concept in information theory. The kind of info density I'm talking about is not that. This kind is for video games. Basically, a game's information density is the number of gameplay elements players need to process in a short amount of time. It's not just enemy density, it's all those other things I mentioned before. Resources, objectives, moving through space, and it's a lot more than that too. Don't get me wrong, I think enemy density is good. Being outnumbered makes players feel powerful, overwhelmed, and sometimes both. If the player is too powerful though, enemy density doesn't matter nearly as much. For example, area of effect or AoE attacks can make enemy density irrelevant if they don't come with drawbacks to match their strength. And regardless of player power, enemy density at a certain point can feel like a cheap way to increase difficulty. Metagame elements like loadout selection play an indirect role in information density. Your equipment and strategy can decide how much work you make for yourself, yes, but when you're in the action, you're not deciding what weapons in your backpack to switch to. Even niche strategies like loadout swapping in Destiny have everything planned out beforehand. And, just as you can change information density that you experience with choices, game designers can and should change information density across different parts of their games. There are three main ways information density is provided to players. Environment, objectives, and enemies. Just as real density is determined by the space occupied by some mass, information density depends on the space in which you play. This is the job of map designers. Item pickups, for example, can be a key point on the map that you need to keep in mind in order to win. What's in the map also dictates how you plan your movement within it. It can force you to slow down or let you rip through it at your own pace. It can make you consider the order of your actions, and it can give you places to rest and regroup. Space is the most direct way to see enemy density. If you're put in a giant space, you can separate enemies and objectives enough to deal with them in small groups. Objectives give you win conditions. Your objective may be a direct result of pickups in space, like jumping around to pick up various objects. Sometimes objectives can flip the script. Instead of considering, how do I get through the enemy, a defensive objective makes you ask, how do I stop the enemy from getting through me? Another part of info density is enemy variety, especially in a single encounter. For example, take this combat slice from Destiny 2. All these scions and thrall pose a threat, but on their own aren't interesting. They're easily dealt with. However, things get more interesting once you add snipers in the back. Now you suffer from high bursts of damage that force you to stay close to cover. Give those scions the ability to multiply their own numbers, and you have close and long-range threats. 
they combine to make you consider which needs handling first. Here in particular, you need to consider how much enemy density you can tolerate and change your targets based on your individual needs. Sometimes an enemy can operate as an objective. High value targets are frequent in action games as an incentive for aggressive and risky play. At other times, enemies may function as a space obstacle that you aren't meant to overcome, but instead get around. And all of these can shift in time, and encounters may have some, but not all, of these elements. Destiny's Riven Fight from a five-year-old raid is still regarded as one of the hardest and most complex encounters in the game. I also held this opinion for a long time, and I do think the encounter is difficult on its face, but practice has tempered my view. As players get more used to mechanics and difficult content, they develop strategies that streamline that process and create enough error tolerance to help newcomers learn. So players can directly influence information density with their game and metagame choices. Let's talk about the metagame first. How you approach an encounter will dictate how much information you have to deal with. If you're with a team, how are you distributing tasks? Will there need to be a lot of communication, and can that be separated in a way that makes it easier to send and receive information? If you're solo, it's essentially juggling. You're trying to figure out how to juggle as few things as possible. When soloing group content, this may mean doing several different jobs in sequence. So you have to shift your focus more often, but you still only mind two or three things at a time. The tools you bring also give you an easier time dealing with certain tasks. If a weapon makes dealing with multiple enemies easier, then you're likely going to reach for it when you head into enemy-dense content. However, if a tool is too good at too many things, it can overshadow other tools, even ones that outperform it in niche cases. That leads into a discussion on power creep. I'll keep it short. Power creep tends to lower information density because it simplifies the game. One tool solves everything. People will refer to degenerate strategies in player versus player. And degenerate is a neat insult, but this also happens to fit nicely with the mathy, game-theoretic definition, where every game state is optimally solved with the same strategy. And yes, degenerate strategies do exist in PvE content. When something is degenerate, it doesn't matter what devs or other players do, you've already solved every problem regardless of what strategies, enemies, or environments they throw at you. That's why degenerate strategies are usually targeted first for nerfs, because it allows the game to actually challenge you in different ways. So, information density is a product of developer and player input. It can change with environment, enemy variety and density, objectives, and player strategies and loadouts. These factors are heavily intertwined. You can choose where you fight based on your loadout, enemies can become objectives, and so on. I started this discussion because I wanted to know why it felt good going after enemies in Destiny when it can feel stale or even discouraged in Warframe. After watching this, I hope you can think more deeply about what gameplay elements you enjoy and why. More importantly, we should be able to discuss this with our friends and gaming communities while staying on the same page. So share this around, give your thoughts in the comments, and subscribe to increase the density of quality content in your feed. Thank you for watching.